don't look for chairs because everyone's going to stand. But those of you who are at the back, you, there's actually quite a bit of room up the front here. So why don't you be bold? Uh, okay. So look, if you're going to come and go, that's absolutely fine. But this is my message. We have to disrupt ourselves first before we can innovate for the rest of the world. We have to create the future through our actions and we'd actually need vision before we strategize. So if anyone doesn't want to listen to any more, please, can you remember those three things? So repeat after me, ready? Disrupt ourselves. Create the future through actions. Vision before strategy. Great, that's the only didactic part. So these are my questions for you. How can we imagine strands of the future for education? How can we understand the future as a complex adaptive system? You heard all the systems thinking going on in the plenary just now. And then how can we truly make a difference and shape the future to our preferred and viable ways? So anyone got the answer to any of those? You get the throwable mic if you have. Anyone want to try that? Ah, oh, come on, be brave. Okay, well, I'm going to introduce a simple way of thinking about this that is definitely working in my university. I have to tell you, we have no particular advantages. We're a big, elite, campus-based university, research-intensive. So don't think I've got it easy at the University of Western Australia. It looks beautiful, but that's all. <laughs> so here's my idea of what a complex adaptive system might be. I'm going to put the clicker in the other hand because I think I'm affecting the mic. So just supposing we divided what we know is a complex and very wicked system to get hold of into eight components. Just supposing we did. I'm going to tell you what they are and then I'm going to tell you how we might actually use them. So first of all, we've got learning itself. Does anyone think the nature of learning is actually changing? Let's have a show of hands. You, not very many. Um, do you think knowledge is changing? The nature of knowledge is changing. You heard a bit about that in the plenary. Who thinks that is changing? Yeah, more than half. What about the nature of teaching? Are we the teachers that we ourselves were taught by? Who thinks teaching is changing? Graduateness. This is what I mean by what happens to students when they leave our educational institution. Is that changing? Is that changing? Yeah, okay. Uh, learners themselves, there's more of them, isn't there? There's more of them and we ourselves are still learners. So who thinks that the nature of learners is changing? <laughs> Technology, it's not the same as it was when OEB started 22 years ago. I know I was here. Who thinks that's changing? Yay! Most hands for that one. What about the location of learning? Do you have to go to university anymore? Do you think that's changing? Some people do think you have, some people not. And then, I know most about higher education, but you can substitute this for anyone who's actually providing the knowledge. The actual nature of academics, are they changing? Who thinks they're changing? Oh. <laughs> They're not changing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Professors the same as they ever were. Yeah. Okay, so listen, I'm going to go back now and talk to you about how you can use these ideas to try and imagine the future. Think about Education 1.0, the traditional view of learning, certainly going back at least a thousand years. Started in Europe with Bologna and so on and and has influenced the way we understand formal education. So each one of those you could have a look at in a matrix. So look at the nature of learners, um, certainly with the first type of education and the kind of the past, 
hindsight is that as a learner we were an apprentice or an acolyte. Learning itself was received. By the way, I'll put all of these on my website. You don't need to write anything. They'll all be there, I promise. Um, knowledge was transmitted, wasn't it? I had it, unzipped my head, unzipped Ali's head over there, put it in, zipped it up, tested whether the transmission happened. How did, you, how did I do with that one, Ali? Yeah. <laughs> Academics, the authoritative expert. Teaching, teacher to student. Graduateness, you were degree qualified to do or be something. Very elite system. Uh, technology, pretty fixed, pretty fixed. Um, and learning location, static and sustainable. Everyone built the dreaming towers, didn't they? To be almost like the church pointing to the heavens, yeah? So Education 1.0, you can explore those, get some hindsight from the way it used to be. But of course, Education 2.0 probably maybe started around 50 years ago um, and accelerated along with you know, Web 2.0, probably the last 20 years or so. And actually, if you look along each of those lines, the insight is that things are starting to change, right, yeah? So the learners, some people are starting to think of them as customers or clients. Does that happen in your institution? Show of hands. Yeah, a few. The students are our customers, yeah. They pay the money. Um, learning, we're starting to recognise it's not just happening on the campus, in the school. It's actually about what goes on at many other times too. And it can be informal. At the University of Western Australia, where we've got a gorgeous campus and eight libraries, the bottom floor of everyone is now informal learning spaces. Is that happening with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Well, at least socially constructed. A little bit of understanding that it's what the individual does with it and whether it's applied. So it's not fixed and transmitted with one truth. Would you agree that's starting to change a bit? And people are not sure about this, you know. Some people can. Um, academics. Well, I think we agree that the professors haven't changed very much, except for me and Ali, of course. <laughs> Um, but they're supported, aren't they, by facilitators and assistants, usually in a university, our graduate students. Teaching, well, some recognition that peer encouragement is important, and perhaps the insight in graduateness, very much a license to start practicing. In my university, if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be an engineer, you've got to go through quite a few years and pass out to stand a chance of doing that. Very contrary to some of the discussion you heard in the plenary this morning. Now, technology cautiously applied. Does it work? Where's the evidence? Who's heard that in their institution? Does it work? Prove to me that it's worth my investment. And actually, you can't because things move on too quickly. If you make it purely evidence-based technology, you'll go back to the past. And finally, learning locations, blended and flexible. Would you agree? A little bit more different, yeah? Okay. So those are the insights. I've brought us roughly up to the present day now. But actually, if you want to create the future, you need to look beyond, well beyond all of that, and one of the things futurists do is try and extrapolate the trends. So I'm going to have a quick go at this, and this is Education 3.0. So learners, they become perhaps co-developers and co-researchers. Learning is obviously lifelong. And when I was at the birth of my fifth grandchild in London in April this year, um, I thought to myself when she was born and passed, fortunately, to me, uh, I, I thought, how are we going to educate you? You may live to be 120. You're not going to have one career. Um, you may have five careers. You may have 
you'll be doing jobs that I can't even imagine. So when Jasmine turns up at your school, your college, my university, in 18 years' time, how are you going to deal with her and the many other babies born in London this year, 2016? So, lifelong learning in its truest sense. Knowledge, knowledge, we know it's for free, it's contextual, it's reinvented, it's applied. So when you're strategizing for the future, you need to think about knowledge very, very differently. It doesn't belong to one professor anymore. Academics, um, in my university, I closed all the regular face-to-face -face professional development and instead, we treat our academics and their supporters as learning leaders and designers. So they're going to lead the future for learning. They're not going to be the ones who are going to say it has to be done in a particular way. We think of them a little bit like you might think of your personal trainer to actually increase your fitness and keep you motivated. Don't tell them I said that. Um, so teaching then becomes co-constructed and co-created. I'm on the line now of graduateness. Absolutely, you heard this morning, we need to prepare people for multiple uncertain careers, many of which we can't even imagine. So all the new ideas of graduate attributes and many more besides. And now technology, obviously digital, obviously mobile. What we've done with, with our campus is treated mobile as the new blend. And in fact, students spend far more time on their mobiles, regardless of their location, than they do in our classrooms. And learning location, that becomes chosen. Not go to a particular institution, but enabling and everywhere, and chosen for giving the learners the best possible opportunity. So, for example, what happens if you teach mathematics on a boat out in the river? Has anyone tried that? Time you did, I think. So, do you get the idea of deconstructing and then extrapolating? That's good because you're going to do it now. Okay. So, I'm going to take you forward and start to ask you if, Ali, I need your help here, please. We're going to throw you a strand from the future. So, I, it would be helpful if everyone would stand up for this little exercise. Um, and you can move around if you wish. Right, this strand represents learners. Okay. And we'll, it has got a little ball on the end, so can somebody catch it, please? Ready? Ready? Go. <laughs> uh, all right. Pass it back, the strand back. Now we're coming forward with learning, the nature of learning itself. That, it's the pale pink one. Oh, is it not? <laughs> well, we can't agree on the colors here. Cerise, okay, ready? Hands up, ready to receive learning. Could you take that end from me, please? Thank you. Hold it up high. We've got knowledge, which is the pale pink. You ready, Ali? <laughs> I'm getting knowledge out on this side. Ready? Oh. Hold them up high, please. Now, these are academics. I bet they're all going to duck. <laughs> oh, no, I'm getting in a tangle here. Uh -uh. Ready, hands up. 
Can you take that from me? Thank you. Hold it high. This is doing all sorts of things wrong. Is it? It must be what I'm doing. That was the yellow one. Teaching. The red one. This one's got an elastic band on it. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Hands up, I'm coming down here. <laughs> right, graduateness. Do you remember that one? It's what happens when you leave university. Ready? <laughs> Go. <laughs> um, I think that's the last one. So we've got, to, oh yeah, most colored locations green. This is the one without a ball. I thought, I thought I'd lost one somewhere. I'm going to give you that one. It's lost its ball. Can you pass it along the line, please? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have a ball on the end of mine. <laughs> You'll be glad to know this is the last. Okay, this is the learning location. I'm coming down here. Are you ready? Hands up. Right now, what happens next is I want you to try and join an intersection. So you're going to move around so that the ribbon you're holding is crossing at least one other. We could play music, but I'm hoping you can do it fairly quickly. Now those people who are standing underneath that, I want you to have a conversation about what the intersection of those components might mean in the future. Did everyone hear that? <laughs> okay, so join the conversation about the intersection colours. I'll put the colours up. <laughs> blue is learning. Cerise is blue are learners. Cerise is learning. Knowledge is pink. Academics yellow. Teaching is red, graduate purple, technology multi, location green. Is that enough? Just talk. <laughs> I've got 10 minutes. Yeah, there's no question. There won't be time for questions because I'll give him five minutes to talk. Um, 
and then we'll throw these and they we put back and then right at the end I've just got a summary <laughs> That would be lovely, yeah. I'd like some pictures. They're talking. with your ribbon, wherever you are. Just five minutes to go. We'll worry about untangling you later. So, anyone like to report a foresight? Any foresight from the crossover of your ribbon? Anyone brave enough to report a couple of things you discussed? Raise a hand. Thank you. Teachers are not um, no longer teachers. Uh, they are more than facilitators. They are enabling the learning environments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to add? Come on, left side. <laughs> okay. Uh, we had a interesting discussion about collecting data uh, from your students and being able to predict in week two that they're going to fail the course. What do you then do with that data? Do you share it with the student? And how do you adjust your didactic using technology and your teaching expertise to get improved results? That's very powerful. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Hold on. Anyone else want to speak? Say anything? Just hang on to it. Hi, hello. Um, we, uh, yeah, okay. uh, we realize that there is a strong pressure on our graduate students from the industry. And we, talking, we were talking about why is this. And we realize that the industry really want to have quite very good skilled uh, graduate students, but we think they are not knowledgeable enough and not prepared enough. Um, and that uh, the, there, there's a lot of pressure also on the teachers because we need to teach things we might not want to teach because we also have the duty for uh, form the students that they are, let's say, sure. enlightened. Yeah. Okay, yeah, very powerful comment there. Did everyone hear that? Okay, yeah. Okay, any more? Come on, left side. It can't just be one of you who was having a conversation about the future. Any more? Okay. One over here, Alice, the right side's doing better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Hold it up close to Yes, you. yes, we were in the middle uh, teaching and technology and, uh, of course, also learning. And we discussed the different uh, challenges in primary and secondary schools uh, vice uh, uh, higher education because now, you know, for example, in higher education, a lot of material is now in E. I mean, it's yeah. uh, videos, so now the teachers in higher education, they have really now time to spend with the students, to talk, to discuss with them what about the research, about the development. So yeah. technology can help in this way, but of course in primary and secondary schools, it's a different uh, approach because okay. uh, there are the pupils that cannot have videos because uh, if they are too long, yeah. They, should, they need other activities with technology. Sure, okay. Yeah. I mean, the pressure in higher education, obviously, to be the researcher, to create new knowledge is very high. However, we need to create new knowledge about teaching as well as about our disciplines. I'm going to draw it to a halt, okay. Thank you so much. Um, just to say, 
This is what I wanted you to remember. Disrupt yourself, okay? Create the future through actions and vision before strategy. Um, I, I'm happy to share these slides. There's a awful lot of references with them for those who like that kind of thing. Um, but thank you very much for taking part today. Um, I have one request. Those who are holding a stick, can you try and collect up the rest of your ribbon before you leave and before Jeff comes on the stage so it's not going on uh, with our next speaker. So, uh, do you want to say any more? Yeah, yeah okay, thank you very much. Oh, 